All right, so right now, you can see behind me, this is the actual position of the ISS as we speak. As you see, it's just southwest of the coast of Baja, California. Now, I'm located up in Michigan, and I do believe you guys know where Michigan is, but I'll point it out real quick. Uh, Michigan is right here in the middle of the Great Lakes. So you see the ISS is going to pass just north of me. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tune to the repeater frequency of the ISS, which is 437.8 megahertz. And I'll do that on the software defined radio right now. And that's running on, uh, on Discord. So give me a second. I'll, I'll head on over there. And we'll get that up. Okay, so there's Discord. Let's make sure that I've got this. So we're going to go up to Discord. This is the software defined radio. We're going to tune to 437. Point eight, And as you see, it's right here in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and bump up the gain a little bit on that. Just a little. Just so we start getting a little bit of blue in. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now... The, I just did this on the last pass of the ISS, and it worked like a charm. So we're going to see if it works this time. And what I found was that I could detect the ISS from 2,500 kilometers. And what we're looking for is transmissions from the radio repeater on the ISS. So that's, that's just basically a relay that they have up there. So if they have active communication going on... Uh, you'll be able to see this light up on the software defined radio once it crosses this red line. Now, as you can see right now, that's where we are. And we're just now crossing the coast of Baja, California. And if you want to see that, this is the position of the ISS and that's Baja, California right there. So let's go back. Let's see, did that come down a little bit? I want to bring that down a little bit so you can see it a little better. Boy, that doesn't want to move, does it? Let's go see if we can recapture it. And get a little right there that looks a little bit better so you see the cross here that's the current position of the ISS so let's go back over to the radio and wait for the signals to start coming in as soon as it crosses the Rocky Mountain, as soon as it crosses the Rocky Mountains, you should start to see transmissions from the ISS. And they will appear just to the just to the right of this center line of the frequency, because 437.8 is the frequency. But as the ISS approaches us, you're going to get a Doppler shift and that frequency is going to go just a little bit higher. And we should start seeing some transmissions here any second. It should be coming into range now. Let's go see where it is. See, there's the mountain, there's the Rocky Mountains that it's crossing right now. It's getting ready to go into Nevada and Arizona. I don't want to miss the first transmission though. And it should be coming up any second now.
We've got 29 people watching. I'm seeing this will give me a second to kind of look at the chat real quick. Okay. Okay, so the sound is good. This is not a formal... Uh, yeah, I like Air Force Blue. Uh, this is not a formal video, so I don't have all my microphones and everything up and running. This is just basically me and the MacBook Pro. Um, we're going to see what we get. Let's go see where we are. Okay, it's just coming out of the mountains now. We should receive, start receiving signals any second. And what I'm going to do here, kind of move that right like so. Let's increase the gain just a hair. The first signals will, as we acquire signal, acquisition of signal, AOS, is very faint because it's quite a ways away. Now we play the waiting game. Let's go see if it shows up. I installed a new antenna today. I've got a disco and ham radio antenna and it's on a 16 foot um, what the hell you want to call it. It's not a tower. It's on a 16 foot pole so it's up over the top of my garage so I get good views fully out to the west. However, the house is a little bit in the way to the north and the northwest. So if the ISS is low in the sky, we may have trouble receiving it when it comes when it passes north. And there it is. There's the first one. It just came out. So you see right here, there is a little streak. That's the first transmission we're getting off of the repeater. Notice it is well to the right of the center of the frequency. That's because the ISS is approaching us and we're getting a Doppler shift. I'm going to see if I can actually make this a little bit larger so you can see it. Now we're getting some more. So what I'm going to do here, let me move this over a little bit. We'll make that just a little bit bigger, but we're starting to see some signals from the ISS. <coughs> you can see them right down, right down here. But they don't seem to be very talkative right now. We're getting a couple more. Let's increase the gain on that just a little bit. Okay, so there it is. Now we're starting to get some signals. Let me show you where the ISS is right now. Give me a second and I'll move that over a little bit. So it's west of me. It's out over by MC Tune right now. And now we're starting to get some signals. Now look at that. You see how they're getting closer to the center line? So that's where it is. But you see how it's approaching the center line? That's because it's getting closer to us and it's getting ready to pass to my north. So we're going to get station passage here any second. And then as it passes me and starts heading out to the east, you'll see those signals start to appear on the left side of the center. This is a demonstration of the Doppler shifting of a moving object that's going overhead. So now we have station passage. You see how it's on the main frequency? Let's go see where the ISS is real quick. It's due north of me. See, here's Michigan. 
It's going through, it's passing over Marquette right now. And as you see, it's now on frequency. Now give it a couple of minutes and you're going to see it start to shift over to the left of the main uh, center frequency. And we're getting a little bit of a shift now because it's passing me and it's starting to go away. This is a demonstration of the Doppler shift. This is how you know this is a moving object and it's moving rather rapidly. Now for folks that are good at physics and math, uh, you can actually use the velocity of this shift to determine how fast the ISS is actually moving. I think you'll find it's about 17,500 miles per hour. Nice strong signals. Didn't really lose too much of a signal as it passed through and passed over the house, but it's definitely to the left of the center line of the frequency now because it's starting to go away from me. This is doing your own research and doing science at home. Mast, that's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Who was that? Malcolm, you're my new best friend. Yeah, it's a, an antenna mast. I don't know. I was having a um, broke as aphasia. I could, you know, talk about the thing that's in the wall that you can look through and see the lights. I just can't give you the name of it. Now, they're not that far away, so that we should still be receiving them. They're probably just not talking. So you see they're over the southern part of Hudson Bay right now. Maybe this is uh maybe this is my house blocking it. Give it a second, it'll come out from behind the shadow of my house. But this is demonstration that the ISS is indeed in orbit. And it's something that we can all do ourselves with a $30 software defined radio, our laptop or computer or whatever we happen to have. And um you know, you don't really need that much of an, an antenna. My Discone antenna ran me about $80 and the mast was about $40 more. It's about $5 a section for, uh, for a four foot section of fiberglass mass. And uh, I got nine sections. So I've got uh, five going up, so it'd be 20 feet actually. I got five going up and then I've got four right next to it and it is literally um, um, zip tied to the fence around my dog enclosure right next to a, um, um, a pole that's set in the ground with concrete. Now I don't know if you can see it, but there are definitely still traces just to the left of that center line. So here's another one right up here. You see how we're getting these? I'll move that over so you can see it a little bit better. I think we're probably in the shadow of the house. So let's see where the ISS is right now. Okay, we're probably coming out. We're probably uh, getting ready to have loss of signal. It's about 2,500 kilometers away. But what we just saw was clearly there is a Doppler shift in that radio signal that we received. We saw it approach us. We saw it pass the station. And now we see it going away from us to loss of signal out over uh, Northeast Canada. <coughs> so short but sweet demonstrates that the ISS is clearly in orbit around a nice spherical Earth. Science at home that we can all do for less than 150 bucks. So I'm going to head on over to Discord for a few minutes. Um, go ahead and uh, hit the link there. Thank you very much for uh, stopping by. Make sure you hit the likes and subscribes. If you want to toss in a super chat uh, for some more radio equipment, 
it would be much appreciated. But that's about all we have. Let's go back and uh, we'll see where the ISS is now. And while we do that, we'll go back to our monitoring of Canada. And I'll tell you, this is running 24-7 over, um, over on the um, Shamrock Banks Observatory. Thanks to a new computer, as you can see. I actually went out and bought a real man's computer, finally. It's an i7 with eight cores, cores and it's got a Nevada 6070 Ti 8 gig graphics card on it. I got that for some work that I'm going to be doing here in the near future where I'm going to be uh, tracking and photographing asteroids. And you can all join me for that. The cool thing about that is that, you know, one of the problems that you run into with astronomy is you sit there and take images for three hours and it's about as exciting as watching paint dry. It's what you do with those images that is the fun part. And what I'll be doing with those one and two minute images for a couple of hours is running them through some software uh, called Tycho. <coughs> and it will evaluate everything in it, in, in those images, and come up with anything that is moving, uh, specifically looking for any asteroids that are moving at a certain rate and below a certain limit so we won't pick up satellites with it but we'll be able to track and calculate orbits on satellite on uh, excuse me on asteroids compare those to the minor planet center database and we're going to either verify uh, the orbits of certain known asteroids we may confirm newly discovered asteroids and put in some more data to help them get a better orbit Oh, got a super chat here. Woodman Don, Woodworker Don, thank you very much for the $20. That's half the cost of the uh, SDR dongle. Let's go ahead and get back here. And, um, you know, and the thing that you're going to get to see is the end result. You'll be able to see the actual satellite or the actual asteroids going through the star field. And you'll see how we report those to the Minor Planet Center. And maybe one of these days I may actually find one that's not been discovered. You know, I often say that, you know, some people crochet, some people tie flies. I look for Armageddon. It's just my thing. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Oh, by the way, this is the, um, this is the stream that we have going over on um, Shamrock Banks Observatory. You see that trace right here? That is an aircraft over Lake Huron. Uh, I have compared these traces to the location of the stations. That particular one is in Owen Sound in Ontario, which is in, uh, on the southern coast of Georgian Bay. And what I'm doing is I'm picking up reflected radio waves off the bellies of aircraft at altitude that are over um, western Ontario, over Lake Huron, and over eastern Michigan north of Saginaw. So it's actually kind of a cool thing to do. You can also pick up meteors with this, which is what, you know, it's called the meteor fence. That's why we call it the meteor fence. But I, I was looking at these long traces that had flares on them, trying to figure out what they were, and I finally realized those are aircraft. So I'm detecting airplanes 200 kilometers away, which is pretty cool. And, you know, you can listen to a little music and just kind of watch the waterfall go by. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for stopping by. I do appreciate your support of this channel.